Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing the spinal cord and go ahead and get out your colored pens. We're going to be using them today. First, we're going to draw a cross section of the spinal cord. Go ahead and draw along with me. It's gonna look like this. You're gonna have two gaps where the spinal nerve comes in on each side. So this is a cross section of the spinal cord and there's an outer portion that's white and there's an inner portion, I don't know, it kind of looks something like that. All right, so this outer portion out here is white matter. And the inner portion inside is gray matter. And if you recall, gray matter is made up of cell bodies and dendrites, whereas white matter is made up of myelinated axons. So coming in, we've got structures that lead into the spinal cord. Like that. This is gonna be the dorsal side, though that's the back side. Can you see that, dorsal? Which means this is going to be the ventral side and the sides are the lateral sides. So coming into the spinal cord, information is brought in and taken out on a spinal nerve. So over here is the spinal nerve. You can see that the nerve is gonna split into two, almost like a road would split into an exit ramp and an, um, and an entrance ramp on the highway. And those are called the roots. the spinal roots. So we have the dorsal root over here and we have the ventral root over there. And that just provides the proper pathway for the neurons that are bringing in information and taking out information from the brain and the spinal cord. So if you recall, we've already talked about this piece of paper in a previous vid video. We have the peripheral nervous system the sensory division is going to bring in information from the PNS to the CNS, which is the brain and the spinal cord. And then there's gonna be some integration that goes on with interneurons. And then some type of motor information is gonna go out, either skeletal motor or autonomic nervous system motor, which runs um, your smooth muscle and your glands and your cardiac muscle, and it'll go back out to the PNS. We already talked about the types of neurons that are gonna carry this. So in the sensory division, we're either gonna have unipolar or bipolar neurons bringing in sensory information, and going out, all of the motor neurons are actually multipolar. So we're just going to take this piece of paper and we're going to put that information on our drawing now. So. If we have sensory information, I'm gonna use green for sensory. Your hand touches the desk. Well, you can feel the desk. You can feel the temperature of the desk. You can feel how smooth it is. You can feel how hard it is. That information is going to be brought into the CNS on a unipolar neuron. And that unipolar neuron has this cell body. And remember, we talked about how white matter is myelinated axons. So this is white matter out here. This is a myelinated axon. But the cell body here is gray matter. So we have to have an area where all those cell bodies can congregate. And they congregate in something called the dorsal root ganglion. And remember, we know a ganglion is a collection of cell bodies in the PNS. 
So we have the dorsal root ganglion, which is where the cell bodies of all of these somatosensory neurons are going to collect. And remember, we're bringing in sensory information here. And it's somatic sensory information. So that's your general senses. These are not your special senses, because remember, special senses are carried on bipolar neurons, and they're mostly coming from areas in the head. We're talking about the spine here. So we have this somatosensory information coming in from your hand or your arm or someplace on your body, coming in on the dorsal side. There's a dorsal root ganglion to, to have a place for all of those unmyelinated cell bodies. And then it's going to come over here and it's gonna synapse in this gray area right here. So that gray area is called the posterior gray horn. So all somatic sensory information comes into the posterior gray horn. It's going to synapse, by and large, with another neuron that we can call an interneuron for now. So let's remember that interneurons are multipolar, so they kind of look like that. And the interneuron has a couple of options. The first option is it's in the gray matter of the posterior gray horn because there's synapsing and there's dendrites and things like that and cell bodies. It can go into the white matter and then ascend up to the brain. So it can take this information up to the brain and it's gonna go in the white matter because this part of the neuron, the axon part, is myelinated. And remember, we don't have myelinated stuff in the gray matter, it has to go into the white matter. This area here is called a white column. And because it's on the dorsal side, we call it the posterior white column. We also have lateral white columns out here. There's another one over here. I'm not gonna write it because this is gonna get messy. When the interneuron decides to go up to the brain, it runs in something called a tract. Now we know out here, this is a nerve, spinal nerve. So here's another definition for you. A nerve is bundles of axons in the PNS. A tract is the same thing, bundles of axons, but it's in the CNS. So now we know in here, anything going up and down, what we call ascending and descending tracts, are going to be carrying information to up and down the spinal cord in somewhere in one of these white columns, and we call those tracts information coming in and out of the spinal cord is carried in a nerve. So depending on whether you're in the PNS or the CNS, the same thing has a different name. So the second option that this guy has is to send the information right back out again. So there's the terminal end and it's going to synapse with cell bodies and dendrites here with a motor neuron. And remember, a motor neuron is multipolar. And this is going to take that information back out to the periphery. So this is a skeletal motor neuron. It's going to be um, multipolar and it's going to synapse here in this area here. So this is called the anterior gray horn. We brought in somatic information on the dorsal side, or the posterior side, on a unipolar neuron. A multipolar neuron helped it integrate. And the skeletal motor neuron, is also a multipolar neuron, is going to take that information back out. This, when we go right through the spinal cord and back out again, is called a reflex. I'm gonna write it over here. I should actually be writing it in purple because it's... So a reflex 
is like when you put your hand out to touch something that's really hot and you pull your hand back really fast. You don't even have to think about it. It happens without the information having to go all the way up to the brain. That's kind of secondary. Your brain finds out about it after you have already moved your hand. So a reflex is a sudden, unexpected series of predictable events. And the interesting thing about a reflex is that the sensory information comes in, the interneuron makes a decision, and synapses with a motor neuron to have you pull your hand away. Nowhere in here was the brain involved in pre-planning or thinking or deciding whether it was too hot. You decided this without the cerebrum. And there's a number of different types of reflexes. This is just one of them. Um, and it's a fairly simple, what we call arc, meaning it comes in and it goes back out again. We're gonna talk about reflexes a little bit more later. So this is our neuron here. And we can see that it kind of has a couple of choices. The first choice is to bring information up to the brain in an ascending tract. The second choice is to allow a reflex action to happen. There are some other types of reflexes where the interneuron actually crosses over to the other side of the spinal cord. This area in the middle that's very thin is called the gray commissar. And remember, we keep the left and the right sides of our nervous system pretty separate. So a lot more often you're gonna be seeing things go up and down. And there's only certain places where things are allowed to cross over. Okay, so now we've talked about how somatosensory information comes into the spinal cord, how it gets up to the brain in an ascending tract, and it comes back down from the brain in a descending tract where it can synapse with a motor neuron. But skeletal motor neurons are not the only motor neurons in town. We also have the autonomic nervous system, which also contains motor neurons. They are gonna synapse here. They're still motor neurons, so we're still drawing a multipolar neuron, but it's going to synapse here in the lateral gray horn. So any information coming down in a descending tract is going to enter the gray matter, it's going to synapse with the lateral gray horn, and then this is going to come out to the body. So it's still a motor neuron, but it's part of the autonomic nervous system. So a quick review of what we've covered. We had the posterior gray horn. What is this doing? This is receiving incoming sensory information or action potentials. And this is coming from the PNS, so coming from the periphery. And this is going to synapse with either an interneuron, which is the more common thing, or in the case of some reflexes, it sometimes might synapse with a motor neuron. Okay, so that's what's happening in the posterior gray horn. We are receiving sensory information on those unipolar neurons, and we're gonna synapse with an interneuron. On the anterior gray horn, This is real estate that is dedicated to motor. So we are receiving instructions now, remember, from somewhere, either from the spinal cord or the cerebrum, but um, from the CNS. And we are going to synapse with a skeletal 
motor neuron. And this is going to, by and large, direct movement of something. So this is how you move your body. And this is where that synapsing happens. We also have the lateral gray horn. Oops. And the lateral gray horn is the real estate that's dedicated to the autonomic nervous system. So this is going to receive um, instructions from the CNS as well, but these instructions are about autonomic nervous system stuff, not just movement or skeletal movement. Um, and this is going to synapse with an autonomic nervous system motor neuron. So still an effector still an effector, and this is going to do something like activate or deactivate glands, smooth muscle, or cardiac muscle. So if we look at our map again, and say you damaged this area of the spinal cord. So somebody stabbed you here and it actually damaged this area. You might not be able to activate the skeletal motor neurons that are running through this space because it's been damaged. But you could still feel, so the sensory information can still come in, that part hasn't damaged. And you could possibly, depending on how much damage there was, you could possibly still be able to control your smooth muscles and glands and cardiac activity because the lateral gray horn is not the same thing as the anterior gray horn. Likewise, if you got hit in the back and you damaged this part, you might not be able to feel, these senses don't, don't, would not be able to come in, but you can still move and run all your autonomic nervous system activity. When you go to the doctor and he hits your knee, to see if your reflexes work, what they're looking to see is that all of these connections are working properly. That's it for today. See you in class.